Hey girls, it's Bree. It's Cece. It's Angela. And you're tuned into For, For the, the girls. girls. Whoa, I just smacked my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very delicate story that we had, you know, our, our sis writing about. So I'm excited to get to that. But first, I'm going to read a review from the I put my credit on the line for him and it went wrong. What do I do episode? We remember episode. that one. Mm, mm, that pulled some strings. So Amani says, I didn't know what y'all were going to say to this. This situation would devastate me. I'm very into business, but wow, y'all hit every point and couldn't have or I'm sorry, y'all hit every point that could have and should have been made, especially emphasizing that it's also her fault just as much as it was his. Oh, but yeah. also, she's young, so I understand why she doesn't know any of this yet. Life teaches you, but wow, y'all are great at giving advice. Thanks. We try, girl. Nice. I will say we we made a lot of mistakes ourselves, right. so we're just speaking yeah. from experience. <laughs> yeah, we're about to sure. help this young uh, sis mm -hmm. yeah. with some mistakes as well. <laughs> or preventing some preventing, mistakes. Preventing, yes, from, all, from our mistakes. So, okay, <laughs> y'all ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. She's anonymous. Hello, I'm a big fan of For the Girls, and I was wondering if I could get some advice on the following question. I am 20 years old and just starting to venture out into the world. As a teenager, I was never really interested in any immature teen boys, and because of that, I have never been on a date or had a boyfriend. I've always been focused on my personal goals and development, and even as an adult, I haven't really found anyone who I feel matches what I'm looking for. However, at my current age, I've already found myself to be very interested in sexual activities, and I'm in a place of curiosity. Hmm. I've told myself I would prefer to wait until marriage to explore these thoughts because I don't want to experience my first time with just anybody. But I can't help but feel a little impatient waiting for my future husband to appear. I do not intend on going out and having one night stands or anything like that, but I'm wondering if I should explore with a future boyfriend rather than a future husband. My question is, how should I go about these feelings and desires moving forward? Should I continue on my path to wait until marriage or should I explore the side of me aching to emerge? <laughs> that last that, point. That got me. <laughs> Whoa, that is deep. <laughs> Thank you so much. And again, I love the channel. Woo! Love it. All love right. It. Okay. I feel like she's my little sister right now. I know. Come on, y'all. We got to get her right. But what's funny is if it was, I'd be like, don't you do anything? Lock it up. <laughs> But Keep no, we're going to be we're going to be realistic. Yeah, um, we are. But also the goal here is to protect you and your your mental and yes. your physical, mm -hmm. um, which sex definitely will will tamper with both. Both. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely get into it. And Let's, she's, she's at that ripe age, you yeah. know, when you start yeah. feeling that the ripe age. You start feeling <laughs> the teen. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a grandmother. I can't. She's These start, young kids, they have that right brain. Right. She's <laughs> starting to feel the tingle, y'all. Yeah, no, I get it, yeah. Okay, so let's first talk about how to know when a man is someone worth giving it to. Whew. Because <laughs> I think when, okay, I'm trying to think back to like my 20-year-old self. Um, what I will say, and, and it's really funny because as most of you know, listening and watching, I waited for marriage with Dre. I'm, I was not a virgin. So I do want to explain my story a little bit because I think this will help our sis here because she is debating whether or not to save herself. There was never a moment in my mind where I thought waiting for marriage was a thing that I would want to do. So I for sure was like, I'm getting on the sex horse. I just don't know when or with who, but it's going to happen. Um, it was very natural for me to think that way and to not feel at all ashamed of that because of my upbringing and how my mom talked about it. My mom got me on birth control. One, I had really crazy periods and she was like, this will help. But also when you're ready to have sex, it will protect in these ways. And she made it very obvious that, but it won't protect you from STDs. And so it's important that, you know, the guy wear a condom and all of that. So I just Go felt ahead, Mama Dawn. No, very right comfortable with her mom's if a nurse and too. when yes. I was ready. Was ready. <laughs> she wasn't back then though. She was a dental nurse. assistant. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. She was in school. So I was very comfortable. It sounds like you are not comfortable. You are, you probably were raised in a way where, you know, waiting for marriage is normal, or maybe you have religious reasons is why you want to wait, or who knows. But if you're 20 and you're wondering, like, ah, like, I want to do that, like, my body's telling me I should do that, but it, it 
feels bad to do that, then I think your thought should not be, I want to wait till marriage. It should just be waiting until that time that feels right. And I think when we think of waiting for a time that feels right, it has to do with the person. Yeah. And I think probably all of us have done like one night stand situations where it was like, oh, never going to talk to him again. Or maybe that was just someone who I talked to for a little bit versus like a full on committed boyfriend. Um, For me, I definitely was a full on committed boyfriend person outside of my one scenario. And it's so funny because I always tell you, I'm like, well, he doesn't count. I don't count him. But I did. You know, I did. And that I felt ashamed of. And I felt ashamed because I was very intentional with how I wanted to be sexually. So when you mentioned that you want to kind of like find the right person and again, getting back to the question of how do you know when someone is worth, you know, giving that up to my answer would be how they treat you and also you being realistic with what your goal is. So if you're dating a guy and he treats you really nice and your goal is I want to just pop this cherry, get this thing pop and see what it's about. See if I like it, see what I don't like. And it's just about me doing what I want in the moment. And I'm not really looking for something super serious or really wanting to move intentional. Then that's one thing. If you're getting into a relationship with someone who is a boyfriend who you're like, I could really see myself, you know, being with them, then it kind of puts a little more like specialness to it in a sense where then I think it makes sense to wait a little bit because you don't want sex to ruin the relationship. And having sex with someone too soon can definitely do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let the girls pick up on that because I know y'all are going to touch on some other things. But that's my little two cents so far. That was really good advice, Brie. It was. Yeah. Um, Well, I'll give you some advice from my own experience. Mm -hmm. So I I was very different from Brie and Angela and yourself (laughs) um, when it comes to my um, sexual relations when in my early twenties, um, I was definitely a little bit more free. Uh, and at the time I, I thought that it was a choice that I was making because it's my right to, to be free sexually and have sex with who, whoever I chose to have sex with. Um, however, I will say now, many years later, I look back on it And I used sex not as um, as as something I was doing because I was really into that into this guy or whatever, um, or I was dating this guy seriously because that wasn't the case most times. Most times I actually would have sex with uh, a man once, maybe twice, and then never have sex with them again. Um, And so I realized that I was doing that as like a defense mechanism to men hurting me so i i almost made my myself i i i made myself um this persona this very masculine persona uh that i kind of carried out into the world and um almost um built this this whole facade of like i'm this super boss woman um, and I'm going to treat men how men treat women. Um, and, you know, for a while, I convinced myself that that was the truth. But in reality, it was a lie to try to protect myself. And I would oftentimes use sex as a tool to try to get what I wanted from a man or because I thought that I there was this dude that, that I really did like. I needed to have sex with him in order to keep him around. And that was 100% the wrong way to go about it all. Um, so I think that with you, you know, I, I, I hear that you're, that you're eager to explore. Um, I want to caution you a bit about how you go about your exploration and who you go about your exploration with. Because um, a lot of men will tell you what what they know that you want to hear to be able to get what they are looking to get from you and most of the time it's just your cookies right so um so I just want to give you a little bit of a caution just because of my experiences um sex can be very rewarding but they can also be very traumatic and I actually had um, a lot of traumas around sex that actually fed into my current relationship with my husband 
because of how I pursued my, my sex life in my early 20s. Um, so, you know, as you're navigating this space, you know, I really, I, I love that that you are leaning into this with some intentionality and you're, you're like, I don't want to have one night stands. I want to have it. I ideally want, want to wait till marriage, but I know that that might not be realistic. I personally don't think that you should wait till marriage. I think you do need to have some, some type of exploration, but you should do it safely in a way that obviously it doesn't harm you physically because there are some STDs that you can't get rid of, girl. So, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you're doing this exploration very safely because you don't want something that you do in your early 20s to affect you long term when you do meet your husband. You know, like like an STD you can't get rid of or a child with mm -hmm. a, with a man that, you know, really doesn't give a shit about right. you. Right. So so you have to be very strategic about this. Um, but I think that, you know, where it seems like where you're at in your stage, you're just you, you feel the, these urges and you kind of want to itch them a bit. Um, but you don't want to just itch them with just anyone, which I 100 percent agree with. <clears throat> I think you might also want to explore things like toys. I was going to say you could itch and, yourself and, to go and, there. And, and, and masturbation. You can try on yourself, Yeah, sis, you like, know. I'm, you know, I, I can't really speak to that a lot. I actually, I'm, I don't Same. masturbate. Um, never been my, my thing. I think I probably don't because I... I itched that scratch with <laughs> men, which I, I, I just told you, like, you really need to be careful about that as well. But... You know, to, like exper experimenting with toys and like masturbation is a really good way to kind of like itch those scratches without any risk or harm. And you get to know yourself. your body too. Exactly. Like, like um, what do you like? You know your erogenous zones. Everybody has different what areas. What are those? Your erogenous zones, like erogenous zones. Yes, like what? your your zones that are stimulating. Every woman, like some common ones. Are oh, you, they can be like anywhere on your body. Yeah, like some common oh. ones like are your inner nipples, thighs, your inner nipples, thighs, your like ears. Your ears. Oh, like, gotcha, gotcha. And yeah. some are more sensitive for other women than than some are. It's like you get to know your own self, and mm -hmm. I know there's like a lot of shame that could be shame around that for some, like depending on your upbringing. But you know that's a, a wonderfully safe way. <laughs> to itch some of these desires that are what did she say oh like <laughs> emerge wait emerging. she said throbbing no not throbbing no, no, she's like say. throbbing don't <laughs> don't put words no, no, in her no, 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 mouth no. emerging aching to emerge aching, aching to, to emerge, emerge. girl <laughs> we need to like coin that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean okay so just to kind of build on them and i guess we were talking about our first experiences i was very much imprinted on young as you uh, you you find someone and that's the person you're gonna fall in love with and that's the person you're gonna marry and that's what i had going into like my first time and probably all my first boyfriends like I'm going to marry this person and we're going to have sex with just each other. Oh, and it's whole opposite. <laughs> right. And then you find out you're getting cheated on. Yep. And then like the it's, world it's, crumbles. Especially in your 20s. In your Girl, 20s. in your 20s, right. these Devastating. brothers right. ain't shit. My college boyfriend was getting it. And who <laughs> knew? Like, you know what I'm saying? He I knew. Was, no, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but on my side, you yeah, know, I'm yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. that sex is what's going to make him be the person that I had envisioned in my head. And so that's like my first piece of advice. Like when looking for a person or, you know, getting to know someone, take Bree's advice for sure and don't have sex with them right away. Because a lot of times you're not going to be able to get to know that person well enough um, in the beginning stage. Because it's a honeymoon, st honeymoon stage. In the beginning. Everybody's perfect in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and so... And then I think another thing you'll learn is that sex is not going to make that person be what you want. Oh, them yeah. To be. That yeah. person's going to be what they want to be because they want to be yep. what they want to be. Not, yep. your, yeah. not your sex, not whatever you do for him, not cooking and cleaning and keeping his little dorm together. None of that is going to keep him, make him be the way you want him to be. It's got to be him. So that's my first piece of advice. Now, if you find a guy who, you know, 
miraculously <laughs> at that young age because i know there are a lot of young men out there it right sounds now like she dates older though because she said that she was never she was never in, in, sure. in, so like, if you find any man who kind of even if they date him older don't don't mean that they're right. that their head is right yeah. i'm telling you i've maybe you're off maybe you're off out it's here it's <laughs> if you find a man with their their who seems as if their head is in a good place and their intentions are good and their heart is good and you get to know them after some time and you feel that itch I'm not going to be the person to point my fingers and judge you for trying out your first time with someone who deserves yeah. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, someone not deserves it, but someone who is worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and even if you two don't last in the long run, you, you learned how to build a relationship with right. this person and not just around sex, but a genuine relationship. Right. You learned skills that either will go with you and this person in the long run or can most likely be transferable to the next relationship. Right, right. And so, I will say this. I remember as a young girl, like the guy who took my virginity, I remember knowing that because we were intimate in that way, I, it, I just felt a different connection to him, mm -hmm. meaning like in your 20s, right, the first person you do that with, you're going to feel this level of like intimacy and sometimes that person won't feel it back. And that's the hardest thing with if yes, you're just like, oh, I'm just going to like, like, oh, it seems like he likes me. I'm going to do this. And then if he doesn't like you because you were intimate, your heart's going to be a little bit more into it. So what usually happens is if you're young and you have sex, you'll be with a brother who ain't nothing. But because you gave him the cookie jar, you want to stay around and you want to give him time to mature. And you spend years wasted on this man yeah. all because you were intimate with him. And so what I do want to say is, sex in a committed relationship is obviously the better scenario sex without commitment is an exchange of service and all services come with terms and conditions mm. and what you need Breach. to do is make sure that you're aware of those terms and conditions that you can handle those terms and conditions and that you actually want to deal with them because if you're not committed he's not going to treat you like a yes. girlfriend you're not going to be treated all the time like this you know queen that you are right. and you might start to diminish yourself and your value and and even gain some insecurities of that or from right. that relationship because that person and didn't deserve you in that way yeah. so again if you want to do the exchange of service if you want to itch that itch and that's all then understand that that's what it is but if you want the commitment if you want sex to be this intimate thing this beautiful thing and this like growing thing that you can evolve not just with that person but the next person and whatever then a commitment a committed relationship is definitely the way to go but that terms and conditions girl it's real read the fine print yeah. like, ask Absolutely. those and, questions and see what it is like you know when when you allow a a man inside your temple because like for women it's very different mm -hmm. because we're allowing something inside of us mm -hmm. men don't have anything that go inside them so like so i mean, so, I mean <laughs> sh straight men don't have anything Drake just looked over here with the brain straight eyebrow. men Wait, don't have i'm joking uh, okay listen that's why i said it look that's why i said it let's be for all men okay my man don't we get just let y'all know many men <laughs> they have something that comes out of men <laughs> Maybe men. No, I'm kidding. One of the pink, uh, two in the stink. Like, don't 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 have don't have much going inside of them. Much. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. No, 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 no. It's, for it's, all, it's all their business. But very different. Like with with us, it's it's really like it's a temple. And like when when you allow someone else inside inside of you, it's almost like it's you're you're allowing the the purity of your your being to be disrupted um and right now you are in your purest form mm -hmm. and so you know your your first time with whoever that that's going to be whether it's going to be your forever person or not you're only 20 years old you know so i i have a strong inclination that you're going to like en encounter a few men before um that that won't be your forever person before you meet your forever person Unfortunately, right that is the so truth. Yeah. um but i i it's, as long as you're very intentional about who that man is and that they're not just like some, not just some busted, like some like dirty man who's just, who's no good. And it's not, and it's like, not, doesn't have his own sense of, 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 of self-respect and just um, impurities um, on like a spiritual level, you know, because that, that can really mess up your, 
your being and and you like your, your energy your energy Absolutely. and and your spirituality and yeah. you know you really that's something that's you really have to guard because i'm telling you when in my early 20s i was i I had this external facade that I was just so put together and like I had it all going on and I was so confident, but inside I was very empty and I was sad and I was depressed and I would, I would just continue to suppress it with alcohol, partying, uh, drugs, more men, um, because I didn't know what else to do. Um, and I, and I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't in an environment that was, um, conducive and, and, uh, um, very, uh, positive towards, uh, my growth. And so, you know, I think that as long as you are being very intentional and you're keeping that in mind about who and what you're allowing into your space, um, I, I totally, prom you know, I, I want to help you to, to promote your exploration just in a very positive light. And I, I just want to throw this tip out as well. And she sounds like a girl who is so pretty, like, pretty, pretty level headed and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and smart. I certainly and was not thinking like you yeah, at 20. You are on Let a me different tell level you. than, than me. I didn't 20. get there to like 28. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like I was just so, I was so pressed to like follow the princess route that I didn't realize that's not how real life goes, you know? And I wish, you know, you know, my parents were great at like, you know, leading me on passive success and trying to keep my head in a certain route, but they weren't really good at shaping who I should be looking for in a person. It was yeah. something I had to learn on my own. So kudos to you that you're even like self-aware of that. There's people that are worth it and people that are not. But my piece of advice to you, and this can be to anybody first time or not, if you're second guessing having sex with somebody for the first time, don't you do it. Probably shouldn't. Like, yeah. and I'm going to be 100%. Not probably. I'm telling you, you don't you do it. You shouldn't do it because you're, there's, there's that chance you'll probably regret it yes. the next day. And yes, that, and I'm saying that, that that's happened to me. It's happened to me. Um, and I've regretted it. And it's like, now that person has some, a piece of me. Right. And people try to diminish, oh, it's just sex. And it might be, but that person, like sex is one of the most vulnerable you know, moments you can have. I used to be that person. I was like, oh, it's just sex. Like, whatever. Like, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll move past, move past it. I didn't even realize how much it wasn't just sex until almost close to 30 when I was like, damn, I have a lot of traumas around sex. Yeah. Like, I wonder where that, what one, that stemmed from. I feel like it's one of the most vulnerable moments in having sex with somebody they get to see you in a light that other people don't get to see you freely yeah and if you're choosing to have sex with somebody and it doesn't feel right don't do it don't do it your instinct is probably telling you something's off with the chemistry the 100%. energy and you'll probably regret it regret it the next day so that that's probably my piece of advice right now to you um i'm not telling you not to have sex or uh to have sex but just like Bree said like if you feel it go for it but if you don't it sounds like you're unsure on some things as well protect your temple yes honey um yeah. i think it's important too i think sometimes especially i mean well men probably do it more um, don't communicate that, Hey, this is my first time or I've never done it. And you know, a man, it's a little different because they're not having anything ripped and shoved inside yeah, question, of them. Did it hurt for y'all? Cause that shit hurt. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It hurt when I waited for marriage after that already being hurt. sexually active and having sex for the yeah. first time with my so husband. I was just, like, that's Whoa. another, that's <laughs> another <laughs> thing, thing to keep in the back of your mind. The person should be it's worth painful. it. Cause that shit's going to hurt the first yeah. time. It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as pleasurable as you think. And the worst <laughs> thing possible is if you, do do it one time with somebody and then you go like a period of time before your next time because it's going to hurt just the same way as it yep. did that time yep. so it should be someone that it can be consistent with because you have to build up that 
being comfortable with that in mm-hmm. there. But because it is painful and because if a man doesn't know that you're a virgin, the way that he would have sex with you thinking that, oh, like we're just having sex would be a lot worse and could actually be kind of traumatizing yep. um, than if you say, hey, just so you know, I'm a virgin because a man would act way differently with everything and then you can be in control and say like yeah that's okay yeah that's fine and he'll ask questions and it can be more of this like beautiful moment versus you having your first time completely like whoa what the hell was that and I am such like how Angela was saying, like the whole princess thing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm very big on like that should be a special moment. So figure out too, like for your first time, what you want that to look like. Because then if you want the lights off and music playing and some candles lit, you can communicate that a, to the person a, a who you have interests with and let them know like, yeah, I'm a virgin. I really want my first time to be like X, Y, and Z and let him, you know, do the, put in the work and give that to you. But definitely communicate because girl, if you just out here and you just thinking, oh, so Sex is going to be great. No, no, mm-hmm. no. It's Even terrible. Masturbation <laughs> feels way different than Way sex. different. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, and you never know what your man is going to be packaging, you no, know, so no. you might get the, the the extra large package and, and it like, might be. Oh, sis, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to need a different large first package yeah. the first time. So check it out. That, that would be traumatizing. Know what you're signing up like, for. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Know what yeah. you're signing up for. Be like, can I look at it first? <laughs> Yeah. Let me see it. <laughs> so, okay, ladies, in 2023, like where we are now, yeah, because it's the times are different. There's mm-hmm. social media, there's TikTok, there's all these things that weren't things when we were losing our virginities. Um, do guys want to wait for girls? Want girls who want to wait for marriage? No. I don't think guys ever wanted girls that wanted to wait the for The answer is no. I can like flat but out. But Dre, speak on you and Dre. Dre is a Dre's unicorn. Dre is a No, okay, a hold unicorn. on, wait, hold on. We, we, we need to touch on this because okay. like I, I'm not going to say that I'm not saying this to like diminish what you guys have done. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But I want to really like lay this in. Because I think that a lot of women look to Brie and Dre as like their idea of how it should be right. and I think that you're looking for a fairy tale because that's true Brie and Dre are a fairy tale and that is a hundred percent an anomaly like you're not gonna find many men like Dre if at all I, I he's truly like like a double horn unicorn like for <laughs> real yeah. um and so I, I, I don't I think that if you have the expectation that you will find a man that's also willing to wait for marriage, I think you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, I'm in just being honest. It's I don't think that's even my husband has said, like, if you were a virgin, we've said this. He said, I don't know if I would have wanted to take that on my husband and i are, a- are are actually very very happy that both of us lived life before we found right. each other because yeah. all because my husband and i are very similar my husband was a was a little hoe and then you know i <laughs> wasn't far behind him okay so so but because of of our personalities we needed to have our own separate lives and our own separate things make make mistakes um thank god we were both safe about it and neither of us caught anything neither of us had any babies and um but um we were able to have our own experiences so now that we are together mm-hmm. we're we're like we don't have any fomo of like oh i wish i had done this before right. i met you or oh like that looks fun i never seen that before like nah we did it yeah. like 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 we both did it and like right. and like now like like together as a unit we're like we are so good and super solid and just like love on each other in the way that we like to be loved because we know how we like to be loved yeah um so yeah yeah i mean even to that point i think like if dre was a virgin asking me to wait for marriage even i would have been like ah. like it's just it's it's a big responsibility. And I think that in 2023 and I think in 2013 and in 2003, um, <laughs> no man wants to wait for marriage naturally. Mm-hmm. Like even Dre's decision to wait for marriage, it's not that he didn't want sex. It's not that 
that was, you know, and that was why it was like, mm-hmm. well, cause I just don't want sex. He yeah. had a, a bigger reason for why and what he thinks sex brings to the table in a relationship and what you can gain when it's not in the picture yet. Mm-hmm. So he had his reason. I think too, what is an issue is women thinking that because a man says he'll wait for marriage, that he's a good man. No, Ooh. just because a man is willing to wait. First of all, he's probably doing some things on, on the side, side that you just have no idea about. But just the act of waiting for marriage doesn't mean a relationship is going to work. It does not mean that you are right for each other. It does not mean that that man is a good man. What it means is it gives you time and space to figure out if it's going to work or if the foundation is what it needs to be and if that's your person. But there's not a lot of men naturally they're going to want to sign up for that. So it's all about at the end of the day, figuring out what your goal is, is your goal to end up happy and married with a husband and kids, because you can get to that goal with or without waiting for marriage. So I think it's just about really checking priorities and having conversations with people have done it. I actually just met a couple um, Hope's friend, Mary and her husband, they waited for marriage. It was her decision to wait and they're great, but I, I don't know of anyone else outside of me. I was like, you did what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of forgot that I did. I was uh-huh. like, oh, yeah, yeah, me too. Right. <laughs> but right. Yeah. it's definitely a, a hard task yeah. and a big ask. Yeah. So. And then, like, I've met a lot. I've not met. I've read or heard, actually met um, some very strong, like, religious, highly, like, into, you know, following the traditions um, of whatever their religion is and come to find out somebody was, you know, mm-hmm. in the drive through with a little, uh, friend on the side mm. doing they thing. Like, so it, at the end of the day, I, I know that religion is there for, you know, the reasons that they, that it's there and people follow what they follow for their reasons. But again, a person is a person and their core is their core. Yep. And, they can believe in the word of God and want to wait for marriage. But if they're not right in their core, they're going to do what the fuck they want to do. Yeah. It just is what it is. Um, no, man or woman, mm-hmm. <laughs> gay or straight, it, it's a person as a person and people have desires and people can control them. People are disciplined enough to control them. And some people are not. And some people are learning how to do mm-hmm. it. So you're going to meet a lot of different people. I think you're ahead of the game because you're so aware that there are shitty people out there and there are not shitty people out there that might be more difficult to find but you have the gumption to know that if you're going to have sex, you want to do it with someone that's worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, just know that it might be more difficult to find someone Some that's worth it. it. And, and now I will 20s. meet, meet yeah. her in the middle, right? Because because you have a desire or even a thought of waiting for marriage, what you should do is be willing to find a man who is willing to wait for a time frame. Yeah, and dude. this Compromise. is something that I really liked about Cece and Shane's relationship because when they got together, they did what they are used to doing. And then they decided, okay, this is different. Like, I feel different about you. I can see a future with you. If we really want to give this a shot, I want to remove sex for a while when we focus on our foundation. And they gave themselves basically like a challenge, almost like, well, let's go this amount of time without it. And let's see how we feel. That also lets you know if you really like somebody. Yep. Because if they get the cookie and then they're willing to wait for it after they've already gotten it, it, you know, that means that they're really in it for the right reasons. Right. And so I think it is harder to wait if you've done it already. So if you're serious about a person and if you want to kind of give yourself a middle ground that makes you feel good about yourself, but also is being real realistic with the times is that when you meet a man and you guys are getting you know on a pace of like serious dating Mm -hmm. let him know I'm a virgin I I'm I'm not opposed to waiting for marriage but I decided I don't need to wait for marriage but it is important for me that in dating like once in a committed relationship that we wait at least six months or a year whatever your time frame is in order to build a foundation that feels good to me so that I know once I take that step I won't regret it and that is completely realistic and and again, I mean, it doesn't mean you're not going to do and something it's else. Great side, practice for like for communication. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's great practice for communication. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think 
That was really good advice. Yeah, Bri. <laughs> I I don't I think we need to end it there. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, like I mean, oh, you're 20, baby. You have. I just remember my 20s and oh, you have so much like learning and life to live and there's so many routes you can choose but the beauty of it is that you get to choose your route mm -hmm. you get to choose whether you want to explore mm -hmm. um, you get to choose whether you don't um, you get to choose whether you find somebody and you commute communicate about a time frame mm -hmm. yeah um, thinking of me my husband and I've talked about this before I've had um, a few sexual partners, not a lot, um, compared to, you know, me, <laughs> <laughs> modern day women, um, you know, and a lot of that has to do with my upbringing and my mother who was a nurse, but Catholic and strong. And if you get AIDS or you're going to die, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, um, I had a patient today who died, mm -hmm. uh, from chlamydia, which I totally think was a lie um so like that's my upbringing and you marry you have my mom waited for marriage and had sex with my dad and that's the only person she's had sex with my mom too so you know that's what I came from um so I think that kind of counterbalanced how many people I probably could have had relations with however um you know my husband and I've talked about this before like he's had many sexual partners I have not had as much as him and I've always like, dang, I don't have as much experience as you or in sex and in relationships. You know, I've never did the one night stand thing. It, it didn't really do it for me. But, you know, some women have like had sex with like celebrities and athletes or <laughs> done like some crazy things. And I've never done that. And um, I wonder if I held myself back from experiencing those things. But then, like, I came around to it, and it's like, that wasn't my goal. It yeah. didn't really matter I guarantee end. if you ask any woman who has done those things that she would be like, I could have went without it. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. I just to say that, oh, I've had sex with such and such. It's not to say I've had celebrities approach me before, like, in front of my father, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, basketball player when I was a teenager at that. Hey. Um, you know, Didn't Chris Brown go to your school and try to get what you did, see? He did, but, like, all the pretty girls, like, Chris Brown had sent his friend to mm. talk to them mm. at that time. Um, <laughs> I want to say this was pre-Rihanna. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but, like, you know, to me, that it just didn't do it for me. So yeah. I was always the relationship girl. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had the moments where, dang, I didn't explore that much or I didn't experience as much. Um, and my sister's totally different. She's explored and experienced yeah. way more yeah. on – Drugs at that. And she said it's awesome. <laughs> um, and so. Me and your sister can relate. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have not. And I think I'm okay with that because I got yeah. what I wanted in the end was a good man who would be a good father yeah. and treat me well and who I have good sex with. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know. Well, this is the last thing that I want to say about it is. I just want you to not feel ashamed by the feelings that you're having. Yes. Um, I mean, people get these itches or what she call it, emerging. Um, aching to emerge. A aching to emerge. Yeah. That one is, aches. Are you a poet? Um, <laughs> 20 is is a is an age where I'm like, yes. yeah, you should be Start if you haven't it. by now. Because it, it starts at a very early age where we get that that feeling I mean, it's like and biological. It's yeah. Like you your gotta, body wants you to make a baby. Yeah. Yeah. So it sends the hormones to your body that gives you the tingle yeah. to want to go out and find a mate. It's like really like Yeah. Kind of basic. Natural. Guys. Yeah. It's like a it's instinctual. Yeah. So. So I just want to make sure she doesn't feel ashamed yeah. because it's super, super natural. And you have many options. I think first, you know, itch the scratch yourself. Um, find <laughs> somebody at least first. for your first. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who at least you can be enough consistent with to, to actually like you know, start your sexual life because you don't want to just do it once and then wait and do it. Cause again, it, I mean, you have to build up. It's like breaking in a new pair of shoes. Mm. Yeah. Right. It's like, Ooh, it doesn't feel great. The first night, second night, really not even the yeah. third night, yeah. by by the fourth night, Six you like, seven right, times you know, yeah. we yeah. broke them in a little bit, oh. but like, it takes a lot of walking yeah. to get those shoes that's, that's to fit. Right. So that is the same thing with sex. So I definitely vote 
vote for the option of, you know, finding somebody that at least you can be real and honest with. Let them know you've never done that before. Set expectations, set boundaries. Again, check that terms and conditions or mm-hmm. yes, the terms and conditions. Because again, sex is an exchange of service it if is. there is no commitment. So mm-hmm. just make sure that you're protecting yourself mentally and physically we don't want no STDs, so do what you got to do, girl. Or babies. Or, or yeah. babies, yeah. 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 Y'all I mean, got anything else? No, I was just going to add that, and, you know, if it feels right. If yeah. it doesn't feel right, don't force it. Leave. Yeah. Yes. Don't yeah. second and, guess it. And, like, if, if it doesn't feel right while you're in the act and you want to stop, oh, that yeah. is your choice. That's an option as well. If he decides that he does not want to st- stop, that is a huge no no, and that's that turns into kick him in his. I mean, it really like it, like it's it goes going left. Like at that point, like if you're like no, I don't I don't want this anymore. At that point, it's becoming rape, and you know so like so just just be very conscious of like how you go about this. My I think my my only point that I want to hit home is like just be safe about your exploration um, and and be okay and stick to your boundaries um, as you're navigating this this new space. Um, men will try to push your boundaries as far as you will let them, but stay true to yourself and what you stand for and what's what feels right to you. Um, and at, at any point, it doesn't feel right. Walk away, run away. Drive away, get the fuck away, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I really mean that. So that's yeah. it. And if he gives you problems, call your girls. We right. got you. <laughs> or the police. <laughs> or the police. <laughs> well, we love you, girl. Thank you so much for writing in and sharing your journey and, and your <laughs> emerging, aching feels. The I want to coin the that. aching to emerge. Is aching to poet, emerge. Though, that I was, know. That's why I'm like, what 20 year old has so that you, line I was of? not like this at 20, you guys. I, I was neither. a hot mess. <laughs> A hot mess. Can we title this episode Aching to <laughs> Emerge? What should I do? Like, Ooh, people are like, what are you talking about? Click, 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 click that sounds deep. <laughs> no, but for real, thank you so much. And let us know, you know, what you end up doing. And if you guys have any advice for our sis, make sure to comment, leave a review. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Brianna Ponte, at CC Costin, at Angela Hanna, and Relationship Restored. See ya. Bye. Bye.